I have it laid out on my floor, kind of half on the hardwood floors, half on the carpet. Truly, if this were me, I actually have it on my carpet. Sometimes I have to move my furniture out of the way. We just kind of make it work. I have my backing laid flat. I love to use fleece backing. Um, fleece or flannel. I just, I like them fluffy, ultra fluffy. So I've used those before. I like them fluffy um, and I like them comfy and I like my quilts to be used. So um, anyway, so I just make sure that it's nice and flat. All the puckers are out. Everything is out. There's a little bit right here. That's just the bridge, but um, that's okay. I'm not too worried about that. Then I'm going to lay down the um, I'm going to lay down the batting. This is a uh, polyester blend, I believe. It's the, actually it might be cotton. I don't know. It's the warm white, um, and I buy it by the yard, and I buy just a ton of it, and then I, this is, happens to be a scrap, and so I'm going to use this. It's a pretty thin loft because I'm using a fleece backing, so I tend to use thinner flannel. You can see that. It's pretty thin flannel. Or, I'm, I'm sorry, not flannel, I'm sorry, backing. But that's because um, I, I do the fleece lining. If you are going to quilt this with a domestic machine, you're going to want some tools of the trade. Some things that I use is, this is a pin cushion box. I just took the, the top off right here. And I have a bunch of pins. I prefer the inch and a half two inch and three quarters. I think two inches is actually too big, but so like this size pin, I'll put it in my palm. Okay, so you can see, so I like, and I just have a bunch of these, and I kind of shake them out. You're gonna need a bunch of those. Um, and then the other product that I use is I do use a basting spray. If I'm going to be running it through my domestic machine, we're gonna do a totally separate video if you have a long arm, which is the actual machine that I'm going to quilt this on. So this is just going to be an explanatory video because let me tell you, for the last 12 years, this is my process. So I absolutely know what I'm doing with this process. Um, but and so I'm just going to kind of describe to you the two um, differences. So then I would, if you are going to put this through a domestic machine, um, I would go ahead and I would spray baste down very lightly. And I just do about maybe, maybe two feet at a time, probably about honestly like a foot and a half to two feet. But I'm gonna lay this batting down on top. And spread it out. So I'm just gonna make sure again, everything's flat. Uh, if you have, um, Here's what I do, honestly, is I kind of lay it out like this. And then what I'll do is I'll kind of spray a little bit here and I'll just kind of like tap this down, spread it out, and then I'll roll the top back. And I'll work in 18 to two feet sections after that. Lay this out, make sure everything's nice and smooth. Then I'm gonna take my, um, my quilt basting spray again and the same thing. I'm gonna do just like a little 18 inch and a patch and I'm gonna lay my quilt top on top. So I'm gonna just center it. I really want to make sure that I'm close to the bottom. Um, I do like to start uh, and this doesn't really matter what direction it is. Honestly I actually do like to start at the top because I want to make sure that my top is all the way pulled up basically that I have enough backing. So I like to start at the top, make sure it's nice and, and the top is beautiful if there is a directional top. This one, it really doesn't matter either way. So we're kind of fine either way. But then, like I said, I kind of spread this out, flip this up, spray, pat it down. And you're just patting and smoothing and smoothing and making sure that everything is covered by batting. And in fact, I can kind of see it there. I mean, look at how much I have over here. So I'm actually just going to recenter it. So I'm going to smooth this out. So now here I am. Now I'm ready to start pinning. If you 
are pinning to run something through a domestic machine, to me, kind of everything needs to be pinned. Um, I usually pin every four to six inches. I would take my pins and I would put a pin in each one of these squares. So this is my nine patch. I would also put nine pins in each of these plus really stretch that edge out there and put pins all along there. So um, <coughs> on the floor, it's really easy. I have stretched it over a table. That works fine too. Um, I've used binder clips around the edges. That works perfectly good as well. Um, and actually, what I kind of did was I would lay it out like this, spray baste it, and then I would do the binder clips around the outside and then transfer it to the table, kind of lay it over either a dining room table. I have a cutting table that I use. And it does make the, this, it makes the pinning part, I would say, easier. I don't know that it goes faster with the transferring because I'm, I'm fine working on the floor. Um, you know, this is real life. On the carpet, I do it a little bit different. Here it's pretty easy because I can feel that hard floor. On the carpet, I kind of pick it in and then I pick up just a little bit and I just make sure I don't have any carpet underneath and then stick it through. Sometimes it does still grab it and I'll just kind of yank it and sometimes I have to cut it. I mean, that's again, this is real life. So then you see about how far apart these pins really need to be. So um, now I'm going to just kind of continue that same pattern over here. And I'm going to do these nine and then I'll get started on the border. For the border, um, I will pull it, I believe this was like a five inch border. And so I'm going to go kind of closer to the edge. And again, I kind of stick it under and I do kind of this like pull up of all the layers. I do have in here my like plastic thimble. I do own a metal thimble. If you want to use that, sometimes I find that when I, cause I'm, when I'm going pretty fast, I am kind of, um, I'll, I'll find that I do scratch my finger a little bit. That's fine. No judgment. So I'm going to go through, kind of line them up with this about every four inches. Once I have this totally pinned and it does take time, um, my philosophy is once you put the binding on it, it's just, you know, everything becomes perfect at that time. So um, even if you're not in love with some of the processes, when you put that binding on a quilt, it just becomes perfect. So now I'm ready to take it to my machine. And I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna drop the camera down and I'm gonna show you how I would machine quilt this. And again, I'm not actually gonna machine quilt it because I'm actually gonna long arm it, but I feel that you can run anything through a domestic machine because Lord knows I have. So I have my 12 year old Kenmore that I still use and love. So when you quilt, one thing you need to know, even if you're using a walking foot, walking foot's help. But when you're pulling, like let's say you're going the straight line, you're really pulling and stretching that fabric, okay? Uh, front and back. I have found my best way to do things, my best advice, if I were gonna quilt this on my domestic machine, is, and I've quilted a ton of them like this, I would sew, I do like stitch in the ditch around the frames, I'm sorry. So I would just put a stitch all the way, starting at the top, all the way down here first. I always stitch inside of my border first, or if this went um, all the way to the edge, I would stitch inside my first block. I just like to have a stitch about six inches in that goes down and kind of tacks it down. Then I'm gonna stretch this out and I'm gonna sew vertical down really close to the edge, knowing that that's gonna be covered in binding. You're gonna pull it down when you get and it should just lay flat um one thing i really hate is when this starts to pucker when this starts to pull and you can just see that pucker i will say that and i can show some problem solving things when that does happen so let's say you're sewing 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 and maybe your um, presser foot is just really down and then as you get down here you kind of get this kind of problem where see it's really puckered or you end up like pulling it really long um, I will tell you that I have stopped 
kind of folded this over and put a stitch in here and that's how I've kind of fixed some puckers so there are things you can do but basically what I do when I machine when I machine stitch on my domestic machine is I stitch all the way down the inside all the way down the outside then I do all my vertical lines so I would for sure go inside these uh, and for sure inside each of the blocks that's and then I would do my horizontal lines and I would go this way I love stitch in the ditch I I can crank out a stitch in the ditch quilt like you wouldn't believe this right here would take me two hours tops to quilt um, it's not very big it's very simple I would do these 18 inches each, every you know um, or I'm sorry it's actually only 14 inches here and then I would do these in between and for sure crisscross that's gonna give you a stitch at least every six inches um, and then if you want a free motion I mean more power to you <laughs> so that's totally cool as well um, my I would say style of quilting is kind of down and dirty and it's just let's get it done let's just make this beautiful product that people can love and cuddle in and that kind of thing all of your verticals then you're gonna do your horizontals if you want to do a diagonal do your diagonals on the inside then do your horizontals I've never um, had a problem with puckering I love using these nice fluffy fabrics and in the end I have some pretty good quilts I hope I know I didn't actually machine quilt this um, I just really hope that this was at least helpful me explaining my process I will tell you that I have had and like I said I have this old Kenmore which is like a old you know generic Janome even and I quilted on that for 10 years and then I finally upgraded now I have an Elna which I'm actually about to upgrade to who knows what and then I finally bought a long arm so um, I've I don't want to say I've run it through everything but I'm saying me and my me and my Kenmore and my old first sewing machine still runs like a dream I bring it with me when I travel and I still do my row by row quilts on that one so there's a lot of value in them and if that's what you're sewing on great and I really hope and I feel like that's who my audience might be is people that um, don't have the uh, time or you know resources to invest in these bigger machines because maybe they don't quilt that much they're kind of new to it I just want to save you some money I want to tell you that there's value in you know some of these uh, simpler machines and that you know there's some beautiful things that can come out of them and um, you know you're gonna find what works for you I have found what works for me and I'm just kind of ready to, to show people that it doesn't all have to be um, so by the book and so traditional because I certainly have found a lot of different tips and tricks that have helped me along the way so I really hope that this has helped um, leave some comments let me know if you have other questions about how I would machine quilt I'm pretty simplistic honestly I I like to get it done and I like the quilt to just kind of speak for itself my bullet points would be you really do need a stitch at least every six inches so if you have eight inch blocks you know let's say you're probably, you're gonna want to do like a diagonal at the bare minimum um, or you know stitch in the ditch around the block and then maybe something in the middle just you need it a stitch every at least every six inches and then I just wash and dry throw it in the wash and, and I've never had a problem and people have enjoyed them for years so I hope this was helpful um, I've really enjoyed this so uh, and if you have other you know any other questions just let me know thanks happy quilting <laughs>